So many times in our lives, God is trying to shift us in the new directions and take us down new paths. God is shifting things in our faith walks, our spiritual journeys, our relationships, our finances, our communities, our ministries. But in order for the shift to take place, our faith has to poise us in the position where we submit to the will of God and become obedient to his word for our lives. And we say, God, I might not see the road that lies ahead, but I trust you for wherever you're taking me. And I trust that you know the plans you have for me. See, when the shift takes place, your outlook on life, your perspective changes. You don't walk like you used to walk. You don't talk like you used to talk. Your actions, your interactions, your reactions change. The things that used to bother you don't bother you anymore. The things of your past that had control over you no longer have any power because you're forgetting those things that were behind you and you're now pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. When the shift takes place, the things that are weighing you down in your life, you can set them aside and move forward forward in Christ when the shift takes place your faith frees you to fully trust in God and you can realize that faith really is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen and that's when the shift begins good morning it is great to see you this morning. I'm Pastor Dave. I'm the vision pastor here at Cross Point Church, and uh, I get a chance to wrap up our messages on shifting our gears in the, to this new year as a church, as a congregation, as individuals, and, and this is just a, a good place to be as a church because I believe God has called us into this new thing that he's asked us to do as a congregation and as individuals and it's important at, at this beginning of this year to just kind of shift the gears and move into this new place and uh, because I, I believe there's a reason that God has done this there's a why behind the the vision that God has done for us I think it's important to know the why I, I think every once in a while we just have to stop and say well why would we do this because you know, you listen to this passage, and according to the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, this is not easy stuff. He talks about being beaten and being, you know, all these difficulties happening in his life. And well, well, why would we do this? Because this is hard, right? Why would we do the hard stuff? Because it's so much, isn't it just easier to do the easy stuff? It's just easy to do the easy stuff, right? I mean, the easy stuff is like coming in here and sitting here on a Sunday morning and just kind of absorbing and taking in and, you know, and then on your way out, you know, nice message, Pastor, and then you kind of go back to doing whatever it is we do, right? And so that's kind of the easy stuff. But God has called us to something greater, and I think it's important to know why we would step into something greater. And, and so I want to I tell you why. I want, to, I want to give you the why behind what it is we're doing and why we would shift into this new place, into this new year. And it really comes down to one word, love. I mean, ultimately, it's surrounded by one word, it's love. The, the why is because we love people. We love God's people. We love people who are outside of the kingdom of God. We love people who are far from God. We just, we love. That's why we would do this, because... It, the Bible says that the world will know us by our love, all right? I mean, if that's the litmus test, right? If the litmus test is how much are they loving people? I mean, it, wouldn't it be great if people could drive by our church here on this site, on this 10 and a half acres sitting here in between Crumbs Mill and Valley Road on Colonial Road with apartment complexes around us and housing around us and the mall near us and all that kind of stuff. Wouldn't it be great if people could drive by and say, now that's a church that I know loves people. And that's a place I know where love happens. Wouldn't it be great? But I think the problem is, and here's the reason why that we need to do this, because I think the problem is the world has kind of understood that maybe we're not all about love. That maybe we're not all about what the Bible says we're supposed to be about, and that is love. Maybe instead we're, we're really about all the stuff that people are doing that's wrong. Right? I mean, isn't it true that the world tends to know what we're against? Right? I mean, isn't it the truth that the world knows what Christianity is against? Because Christianity seems to really promote all the stuff we're against. We do that really, really well. But does the world know what we're for? Does the world know that we're for them? 
Does the world around us, do, do our families, do our communities, do, does the, the world know that we're for them, that we're for their eternal life? Does, does, do people know how much God loves them and that we're actually for them and for their eternal life and their eternal souls? Because I, I believe that's what's at stake. I believe eternity is at stake. I believe that there is more to this life. And I believe that every single person in this room is going to live forever. I believe you're going to live forever. Now, what may come as good news for some of us in the room is you're not going to live forever in this body. I heard that. And he was speaking for all of us, right? I mean, the ibuprofen I took this morning is evidence that I do not want to live in this body forever, right? I had a cold this week. I came in Tuesday morning. The staff sent me home. Like, why are you here? Please go away, <laughs> right? I'm like, okay, fine. So, you know, it's, I don't, but what I know is I'm going to live forever. John 14 says that Jesus is going to make to prepare a place for me, and that place is in heaven. I want you to hear this very clearly today, that Jesus is preparing a place for us in heaven. Every, for every one of us, Jesus is building a residence for us in heaven, and he says, when I finish building that, I'm going to come and take you to be where I am so that you can be with me, and that's, that's eternity. And that's the goal, and that's his desire for every single person who's ever been conceived, born, and lived. And I said that the way I want to make sure you hear that, conceived, born, and lived. Jesus wants all of us in heaven. That's the goal. That's his desire. And, and so how do we live in such a way? How do we shift our lives in such a way that we can be about that, that that can be our why? On the inside and on the outside of what we call church, right? Because it's one thing to do that in here, and we need to do that well in here. We need to be making sure that we're loving one another. The Bible tells us that we need to be caring for one another. As believers, we need to be doing a really good job at that, and we need to be getting better and better and better at how we're looking after and caring for one another in here. But then the Bible says we're supposed to be doing that out there, outside these walls. And if not, this simply becomes a holy huddle. Let's all gather together. Let's all take care of each other. Okay, good. Break. Right? It's just a holy huddle. If it doesn't mean anything when we leave here. And ultimately, what I believe God has called us to is to, to shift into that place where we're taking care of each other inside and merely taking care of others who are not yet here and who are outside. Because God's heart is there. And he's loving those folks. So during the course of the series, we talked about a few things, and so let me just re kind of refresh your memory. Or, or, and in, if you weren't here in one of these weeks, you can go onto our website, you can check out the YouTube video, and you can go back and watch. But the first week, we talked about our own personal lives. How are we going to get this life in order? Because if I'm going to love somebody else, I need to make sure I'm connected to the one who is love, because the Bible tells me God is what? Love. Right. Right. So if I'm going to love somebody, I need to go to the source. It's kind of like if I'm going to, if I'm going to take care of my thirst, I need to go to the source. I need to get something to drink, right? And so I, I need to go to the source of love, and that is God. And that means we need to do something daily to refresh ourselves because we're called daily to love one another. And so we're going to continue to challenge and encourage you to do something in your daily life in the form of devotions and prayer and commitment to God in some way. So, for example, today, you see these laying around the building. And these are, we're just going to give you tools that can make your connection to God and, and your connection to the one who is love as easy as we possibly can. So, um, because, you know, we, because then we can say there's no excuses, right? We made this easy, and so, um, so here's, this, this is just, it's called the Psalms for Lent. The Psalms are a section of the Bible, a book within the, the larger context of the Bible, and, and it goes through a psalm every day and gives you a, a verse from the psalm and gives you a small reading and then a prayer you can pray, and then it gives you some other verses. If you want to look up some other verses, it does that too, and it just gives you a way to walk through all the way from Ash Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, Valentine's Day, I can't wait, 
to put those two together. Um, I've got a phenomenal, uh, now, God gave me a phenomenal message that I cannot wait to speak on Wednesday. Um, I'm really excited about that. But this takes you all the way through till Easter, and you can do a, a, a reading a day. It just gives you an opportunity. Actually, not only are we doing that for you, we're doing that for your kids. So if your kids are in Kids Quest, they're getting one of these today. Make sure they grab one of these. We've got, there's some of these laying around the building. I actually think I want to do this one, but that's just <laughs> the kid in me. But, um, you know, you got cool Jesus over here, and um, the kids are all following him, and it's different things and you can do all through the Lenten season. How cool is that, right? So you can do this as a family. So we just want to make sure you're doing something daily. And then the second week, that was week one as we started and kicked off our new year. The second week we talked about right living uh, and doing right things for the right reasons because it's deep within us that what, we, what people see on the outside is, is a result of what's going on on the inside. And the Bible calls that righteousness. And how do we get in touch how do we get in tune with what God wants and how he wants us to live our lives? And we talked about that in week two, that right living causes right action. And so we need to get right with God. And, of course, that goes back to week one, which means if we don't know what right living is because we don't know, you get it. Right. Week three, we talked about, how do, so how do we do that within the context of our families? And we talked about Rahab, who, whose faith saved her entire family. An Old Testament character who lived out a belief in God in such a way that she was willing to do something bold. And in that bold way of living, she, in effect, saved her entire family. And in week four, two weeks ago, we talked about, so how do we take that into our communities? It's one thing to take it into our families and hope that our families change and, and, and hope that our families really get this. But what about then, what about our communities? What about our neighbors? What about our friends? What about our workmates and those larger connections that we have in the communities around us. And then last week we talked about, uh, and what about the world? What about the missional peace? What about going out and reaching other people who are the least, the last, the lost? What about the broken? What about the people who are deeply in need? And we talked about the, the fact that maybe you just, maybe it's not about giving financially, maybe it's just about giving your life away and how important that is to do. Because ultimately I, what I believe is this, we are messengers of God's love in the world. We're supposed to be taking this message to the world around us. We are called. And I don't know why. I don't know why God would leave such an important message with the likes of us. Did you hear that? I just don't understand why God would leave the most important eternal message to people like us. Because I, 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 I fail at this. I'm not perfect at it. And yet he leaves this message of eternal life to people like us and hopes in hope that we would live it out every single day by our actions, by our lives, by our words, by the things that we do, the things that we believe, the things that we understand. Because he believes in us. And he's given us this e eternal advantage. Those of us who know the kingdom of God, those of us who know this message, those who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, you know what we have? We have eternity. You have eternity. So you're going to live forever, and you're going to live forever with God because of Jesus Christ and his work in your life. That's what I want, I, w I want to see people who know for a fact that when, if you were to die tomorrow, you know where you're going next. I know where I'm going next. I know what's next. I haven't been there yet, but I know what's next. I'm okay with what's next. I'm not in a hurry, but I'm okay. I want everyone to know what's next, to live in a sense that, you know what, I'm just passing through, but heaven's my home, and I've got this eternal security in my life, and I want to make sure that other people have that eternal security, and we've been given that advantage and that burden. We have the advantage of heaven and the burden of knowing other people who need to know what we know. It's, we've got the cure for eternal life in our hearts, and we've been given the responsibility, we've been given the task, we've been given the joy of sharing that to people no matter who they are because without exemption and without prejudice, God wants every single person to be in the kingdom of heaven. Everyone. There's not a single person who's ever 
been conceived, born, and lived. It's outside of God's plan. And if we love God, if we love him, then this is the task we have to take on. This is the why that we would shift into being a, a church that's family first, community-centered, mission-minded. This is the why. Because we believe that God has called us to do something important. Each one of us, no matter where we're at, no matter what we're going through, no matter what life has in store for us, no matter where we've been in the past or what our current situation is, God has something for all of us. Every one of us. You might be sitting there thinking, you know what, I, I, you know, nice message, Dave, but I, I'm not really sure I'm in that zone yet. Yeah, you are. And I could probably walk with you through the course of the day and point out different opportunities that God places into your life. That maybe you're just missing right now because your eyes just aren't completely open. But God is putting situations into your life where you get a chance to be the person God wants you to be. To live above the bar and to be the person he has asked you to be in your life and in the lives of the people that you interact with and the people that you bump into. He's got something for you. Maybe it's just happening right now within your, within your own family. Maybe it's just happening within your own marriage. Maybe it's just happening with how you're caring for your kids. Maybe it's just happening for the things that are closest to you. But wherever it's at right now, God is doing something. And he's asked you if you want to be a part of it. Now, I didn't realize how big this shift was going to happen for us, how monumental this shift was going to be in, in living our lives together as Cross Point Church. But what I, what I know is that it's beginning in, in this six-week time period that we've moved into this year. Can you believe we're already six weeks into the new year? Or maybe you're thinking, wow, we're only six weeks in. But six weeks into this new year, things are starting to shift and things are starting to change and people are saying, you know what, I want to be a part of this. It's exciting. Some of you found out Last Sunday that we're going to start this whole mission emphasis and mission focus, and some of you have emailed me and called me and messaged me and said, I want to be a part of that. I don't know what it's going to look like yet, but I want to be a part of it. And I'm excited that there are people who are being moved and challenged and are stepping up and saying, you know what, I think this is exactly what God has called me to. And that's a thrill. And maybe you got here today and you're thinking, okay, uh, you know, this is something new for me, this whole faith thing is something new, or maybe you know, for you and your, your, in your family, this is a little different, you're not sure how to, how to do this yet, and we want to give you as many tools as possible, and we're going to be shifting into just making sure that you have the tools to live this out. Or maybe, maybe you're in a position like um, where, where you just get a chance to interact with people throughout the course of the day who are just far from God. Maybe like the guy I talked about the other, su- the other Sunday morning. Um, last Sunday morning, I talked about a friend of mine who came up to me, and, and this is a guy who, it, from the outside, from all appearances and from all of his actions, he's a guy who's far from God. And what I find out, and, and as I push a little bit further, he knows a lot about God. He just doesn't want to be a part of the church. And so he came up to me, uh, two Mondays ago, not this past Monday, but the Monday before, he came up to me and said, hey, you're a God guy. And he told me I needed to write a new Bible. He said, you're an author, you're a God guy, write a new Bible. I'm like, I don't think we need a new Bible, man, we got one. He said, well, you know, the Old Testament, that was for the Jews, right? And then there's the New Testament, that was 2,000 years ago. We need a new one. I'm like, dude, I'm not sure we need a new one. He said, well, I said, well, what would it say? And he said, well, it would say all the good stuff that we need to hear. I said, well, that really just comes down to one word then, man. Love. He said, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's really good, but how? How do I love one another? You know, I know it says that, you know, we're supposed to love each other. And so basically what you're saying is I'm supposed to love each, we're supposed to love each other and not be a jerk. Now, he didn't use the word jerk, but that's what he said. So I told him that I talked, to, this past Monday, I said, hey, I talked about you yesterday in church. And he's like, really? Wow. It was kind of, he said, it was cool to be with you in church, even though I wasn't there. I said, well, maybe sometime you could show up. He's like, someday I'm going to surprise you. I said, you're on. 
So I, he said, what did you tell him? I said, I told him about our story about writing a new Bible and everything and how you, you said we're just supposed to love one another and not be a jerk. He said, you didn't use the word I really used, did you? I said, no. He said, good. So I told him Monday night that I talked about him. And for the rest of the night, he's like, I was in church yesterday. I was in church yesterday. My name was mentioned in church yesterday. You see, I, I'm wondering if people who are broken and far from God, because, sometimes because the church broke them. You know what I mean? Sometimes the church did something or said something or didn't do something at the right moment, wasn't there when they needed them or said something about who they are or some relative and they got broken by the church. And, and so maybe broken people need to hear about Jesus and they just need us to live it with them for a bit, side by side, allowing them to say the words they say and be the person that they really are, because I believe God has a heart for broken people. I really do believe God has a heart for broken people. And I believe that God puts the church in the world and calls us to reach broken people who need to hear his powerful message of how much he loves them people right in our own circles, people who have maybe truly no idea that Jesus loves them, that God is there for them, maybe people who feel stuck, maybe people who feel like God could never be for me. If he was for me, I'd never be going through this. And and, and the the fact of the matter is that that the power that you have through the Holy Spirit can reach into people's lives and impose Jesus into them in some way that maybe you didn't ever expect just by being there. Sometimes it's just showing up Right? I mean, sometimes I think we make love really, really hard when I believe God says, sometimes love just means showing up. Just being present. Just being available. Just being real. And just being there. I mean, wouldn't that make all the difference in the world for some people? Just to know that Jesus has skin on and he's you. And he's sent you to be one of his messengers, one of his ambassadors in the world. Because we have good news. And that good news is that God loves no matter what. That God is for us no matter what. That God was willing to give everything he has for us no matter what. No matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been or how off track we've ever gotten, he still loves us. He still loves you. And he loves all the people in your life. And he wants that love to be evident and obvious. And that's going to take some action on our part. Because love means action. And that's why we're making a shift. Because it's time for us to start being the church instead of just doing church. It's time to be the church in the world for one another and for the world around us. Because I don't want to just do church. I want to be church. I want to be Jesus as much as I possibly can in the world around us. I want to be Jesus in my family. I want to be Jesus in this community. I want to be Jesus around the world as much as I possibly can to take his message into the world as much as I possibly can. I want people to see him, not me. Him, not us. And that's the shift. And God has obviously called us to that in this season. You're here for a reason because he's obviously called us to be in that place right here right now because he believes in you he thinks you can do it and he thinks we can do it together so here we go now i didn't expect the shift to be this monumental and people are responding and things are happening but i what i didn't expect is that this would affect me so as we went into this new year be careful what you pray for because as we started the new year my 32-year-old son made a decision to go back to school. He has an associate's degree from ITT Tech, and 
he decided that he was going to go for his, his four-year degree, and so he, just, he, he checked out Harrisburg University. He got a scholarship there to go back to school for cyber security, and he's moving back home. Um, we're actually kind of excited about it. I get to hang out with my buddy, you know, he's always, he's always been my buddy. Um, it was always funny because I would call him Bud, and our last name is Bizer. <laughs> anyway, so... We're rearranging the house and making room because as soon as, like two weeks after he moved out, I took over his bedroom and made it my office. Shift. Here we go. So it gets better. So he's moving home and we head out to Israel on March the 5th for a 10-day trip and about, there's 18 of us from this congregation who are going and I'm really excited about that trip and so we said, you know, why don't you just move in because you're going to house sit for us anyway. And so we're really busy here in the month of February getting him moved in and rearranging the house. And, we're, you know, we went over to his place and we've got boxes and we're, you know, we're doing all the stuff, right? You've been there. Some bunch of you have been there. And, um, you know, I, I always said, once you move out, you're not coming back. Don't say it, never, and yeah. So here we are, and so we're making this move, and, and, and so um, it gets better because Friday, not this past Friday, the Friday a week ago, um, my son-in-law calls me. Yeah. He says, I got some news. Are you sitting down? And no, we're not pregnant. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, what's, what's up? Now, this is Lindsay and her husband, Ed. They, they're the ones that work at Disney World. Ed just landed a managerial position for Hershey Entertainment, and he starts March the 5th. <laughs> he, so they're moving back home. No! <laughs> like, <laughs> shift! <laughs> Holy Shift! <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, it's like, wow, okay, okay. Deep breath, deep breath, bag. <laughs> right? Okay. All right, so, so he's moving up. He starts March the 5th. Lindsay is going to wrap things up in Orlando, and I'm actually going to fly down and drive the U-Haul home with my daughter, and we're going to put her car on the back on one of those, you know, things, and, you know, and so she and I are just going to have dad and daughter time. I can't wait, right? So um, that's happening, holy shift. And, and so in the middle of all that, my other son-in-law, Audrey works at Colonial Williamsburg, dresses up every day. My other son-in-law is in seminary, working part-time at a church. He graduates in May, and he's looking for a church to go to. And we're like, okay, waiting for the third shoe to drop, right? <laughs> like, um, and they're really committed to staying in that area of Virginia, and they love that area. And so he's been looking for a church somewhere around there in Norfolk and, and Richmond and all that area down in Virginia. And, and, but that's an, it's another shift happening, and, which is not odd. When they all moved out, they all moved out within six months of each other. So guess what? And, and Audrey and Lindsay got married six months apart. So this is just, I guess, the way they work. I don't know why. I, what I didn't expect is this, that the shift would hit my home. But it does, right? Careful what you pray for. And we're shifting, and things are changing, and things are happening, and things are moving. And it means all of us. And I wanted to just share that just to let you know that if something happens and I'm, you know, I'm a little hectic or, you know, a little jumbled, it, that's what's going on. Um, but it's, you know, it's family first, Right? And um, I, I can't wait to see what else God is doing. Because I believe it's not, I mean, I tell you this to tell you it's happening from up here. It's happening right here. The shift is happening. 
but I believe it's going to happen in all of our lives. I'm not telling you your kids are moving back home. Thank, yeah, I would never tell you that. Um, but things are happening. God is doing something. And I don't know what it means for each one of us individually, but I'm, I believe it's meaning something powerful for us as a church to reach our community and to change the atmosphere and what God is doing in this community and in the world around us. Amen? Heavenly Father, you know what you're doing. And we trust you and we believe in you and we believe that when you make shifts happen in our lives that it's for the good and for the right reasons. And so Lord, whatever shift we're going through right now, whatever changes that are happening here for us as a congregation at, our, uh, at all of our sites and all of our locations throughout the Harrisburg area and, or what it might be happening in, in individual lives and in individual homes and individual families, Lord, thank you that you are not dormant, that you're not sitting back, but instead you're leaning forward into our lives and making great things happen, changing the atmosphere and making a move toward the things that you want to see happen. Lord, surround every one of the families here in this room today. Surround each home, each person, each family with your love, with your peace, with your Holy Spirit, with your presence in their homes, with your guidance and with your direction, Lord. With whatever's happening in every one of our families, in every one of our homes, in every one of our workplaces, in every one of our experiences, Lord, whatever's happening, you're shifting. You're doing something. Open our eyes that we might see it. Give us courage that we might live into it. Give us determination that we might see it through. But more than all of that, give us your spirit that we might have eyes that see what you see, hearts that feel what you feel. Help us to do that, Lord, as only you can, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and all of God's people said, amen.